So today we are wrapping up with the first part of the course which is the mindset part. Now when this, uh, now you're going to start reading Rework. And Rework is more about action. So the first book we were reading it's more about your mind and how you have to motivate yourself to start a new business. Rework it's about action. It's about consistency and doing something, being a starter, right? So when we talk about starting something, we have to talk about opportunity. And on the, re on the book Rework, you're going to hear a lot about scratching your own itch. So I have here two guys, two people. The first one is Mr. Dyson, and the second one is Mary Kay. And Mr. Dyson, he was an industrial engineer. And one day he was cleaning his apartment or his ha house. And he noticed that the vacuum cleaner wasn't very good. So he went and he started to prototype a new and better vacuum cleaner. Now it may sound like really easy to do. And it may sound like you know it's something that he was supposed to do but the thing is that he wasn't looking for a business he was just trying to do his business um, he's cleaning on his house and he came out with this problem that he was facing and the problem was that the vacuum cleaner that he had wasn't good enough and according to his standards not other vacuum cleaner was good enough either so he decided to start and do something about that now, he tried around 4,900 4, 4, times before actually arriving to the model you see, you see here in the picture. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of dedication for someone, for anyone to start a business. But because he knew that the problem that he was facing uh, must have been faced by many people, he was willing to dedicate the time and the effort and the resources and the energy to 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 start his own business now on the right we have Miss Mary Kay Mary Kay was a regular person too and she was she used to go to these doctor dermatologist and get his uh, prescriptions and this doctor or dermatologist used to do his own house formulas and what happened is that this person he the dermatologist he died and then the his children they didn't want to take care of the state and they didn't want to do anything with the formulas but Mary Kay she knew the formulas and she, she knew those formulas were great because she was a consumer of that product and she did not want that product to cease to exist because she was the one who was using it. So what she did instead, she went to the, to the family and actually bought the formulas from the state and started this company called Mary Kay. And I love this picture because it has, it has this quote that I really like, which is, if you think you can, you can. And if you think you can't, you're right. And that kind of summarizes what the whole first half of the course or first uh, third of the course, which is all about your mind and all about the idea that you can do whatever you want or whatever you set your goals to. And I, I chose these two people because they were not, they were just regular people and they encounter the problem in their lives and when they encounter the problem they decided to do something about it and this is why I chose Mr. Dyson here and Miss Mary Kay so I want you to start thinking about that to start thinking of a problem that you have in your life it doesn't have to be huge it could be that the vacuum cleaner is not working properly you know and you start thinking and, and find ways where you can make it better, where you can actually provide a solution because 
as the course advances that's what we're going to be doing now there is this concept of window of opportunity so many people and many businesses have started and failed and in many cases not all the cases though but in many cases is because the market is not or it's not ready or it's there's already a, a, a leader that's very hard to defeat so a window of opportunity is like we see here in the picture it's a window you know if you want to put if you are inside and you want to throw a ball to the outside the only way you can do it is through this window so that's kind of the analogy when you want to start a business if you go any other space that's not on the window you're either too 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 late or too early so let's say a lot of companies were trying to start um, businesses that were internet related in the 1990s during the dot-com bubble and many of the businesses fail but many of the businesses fail because they needed a huge amount of people using the internet for them to be successful and that wasn't the, the case back in 1997 or 1998 the internet which was just starting so the adoption was very very low so all these companies who had great business ideas they were too early so they lost um, the, the company couldn't handle with the, the way that it was structured right so they went bankrupt they went under so you know the window of opportunity is this period during which an opportunity must be seized or it will be lost you know sometimes you use the right time things start to change and you just find yourself in the middle or in the intersection of all these changes and you can take advantage of the opportunities right we have the famous arbitrage opportunities where if you are buying or selling dollars or euros or any foreign currency you have an arbitrage situation when the price that you buy it is lesser than the price you can sell it and that could happen in one day or in one week or in a couple of hours but if you miss that window then you're gonna start losing money so that's also kind of the of the uh, the the definition of the window of opportunity so when we talk about window of opportunity we're gonna be talking about customers competitors and context so the customers mean are the customers ready are they willing to pay for the service are they looking for your product is your product desirable by the consumers right if we're talking about competitors we're talking about is the market still fluid meaning are there companies already on the marketplace trying to start something if there are no companies in the marketplace then that's a red flag because it may be that there's no market you know think about it if anybody thinks this is a good idea people will start investing money to try to be the first one in the market right now um, sometimes entrepreneurs when they start in a business and they say hey nobody else is doing it this is gonna be a gold mine you gotta be very very careful because sometimes people have tried it in the past and they didn't succeed and that is because the market is just not there so if there are no competitors if you're starting a company and you have no competitors be wary it's not a definitely bad thing but it, it may signal something so the other end of the spectrum is that you have an, a very established company that it's gonna dominate the market so it's a company that has a monopoly so let's say you want to start a social media to compete against face Facebook everybody and their mama uses Facebook so you cannot compete directly with Facebook you have to create some sort of new idea where people will be like oh yeah this is better than Facebook I can use this but that's gonna be very hard to sway away people from Facebook because they are just a market leader they're the incumbent so they they know the market better than anybody because they created it so you have to be very careful if there's already a big powerful player in the industry then your chances of being successful of being number one in the industry is going to be very very low what does a powerful big player in the industry means it means somebody who has over 30% market share 
of your total addressable market okay so that's kind of like what that um, market the the big market player means and then the context is like what we were talking before are we talking about companies who want to sell broadband to other people when there is no broadband infrastructure or e-commerce companies who want to start and there is simply not a demand for that so you have to be very careful with the cultural context and the context of of the people and where they are right now mentally so you understand if it is the right opportunity and you know I put these three things and they they have no numbers it's just a, a matter of intuition and reading and try to uh, and really trying to understand the whole situation so it's more art than science but it's definitely a combination of both now when you start a business you have to remember this graph and this is a diffusion of innovation you have um, you have two graphs in here the first one is when people adopt your product so obviously you start with zero somewhere around here and then somewhere someone start using it and then it increases right it increases gradually until you get to a hundred percent of people using your product so we all would like our product to be used a hundred percent right that's kind of like the way this goes but the way it really works it's more like a bell curve the adoption of the diffusion of innovation so when a new product comes out only a tiny part of people start using it then you and that's called the innovators then you're going to have an early adopters which is another segment and if you see below here we're talking about a percentage of this curve so we're talking about 2.5 percent are innovators 13 percent are early adopters and this is people who just start using a product right and then you see an early majority which is like the mass market when we are talking about mass markets we're talking about the early majority majority already and then you have the late majority and you have the laggards the laggards now what you see is it's a resistance right everybody when you start they want to use your product or, or a certain amount of people but then you see less and less people using your product until it reaches the peak of the majority and the reason is is because sometimes when you have a new product and you put it out in the market there will be people who will never use a certain product so let's get a cell phone cell phones until last year smartphones I mean until last year where they just broke the early majority barrier and uh, they are now on the late majority and trust me I know many people who they did not wanted a touchscreen phone they wanted more like a flip-flop phone and they they just couldn't get it because everything now is it's mainstream the the, the touch screen and those are kind of like the late majority and the laggards um, a laggard is uh, one, a sub percentage of the market in this case they're calculated to be 16 percent who will never switch to your product just because they don't want to they will only switch if they're forced to so this will be like the BlackBerry Logialist, if you were following technology and cell phones, BlackBerry was huge a couple of years ago, and then it lost favor to Apple iPhone. But there's still some people out there who uses BlackBerry for their um, cell phone devices because they're loyalists and they will never switch, no matter how bad the company is, um, and they will only switch when the company goes under. So those are the laggards. And so in reality, when you start a product, you will have a, a, a certain percentage of the people who will never use your product. Now, the two majorities, the early majority and the late majority, they are very tricky because even though even though one is early and one is late and they seem to be the opposite, they are kind of the same in the way that the majority is like every consumer pro product that we buy. We do not expect to buy a TV at Best Buy and then it being defective we expect it to work and and does what it has to do so and a majority a product can only be part of the late majority or the actual majority when it reaches this point so 
people in the majority they want full products and this is a concept that's written about on Jeffrey Moore's Crossing the Chasm book that the majority is they want a, a full product so something that really serves this this company's um, this person's uh, need and now we have the early adopters and the innovators and this is where the startups uh, 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 shine the startups customers are innovators and early adopters who are these innovators and early adopters are people who get excited with technology or people who are looking for a new product or the shiny new thing right the new the newest best thing so these are the early adopters and the innovators now the difference between an, an, an innovator and an early adopter it may be that the innovator is somehow of a tinkerer so if you have a product maybe they have also a product that they have been working on on the side and they and they can either give you technical input and they will be okay with the product working a hundred percent now that's also a, a feature of the early adopter both of these the innovator innovators and the early adopters they will be waiting uh, or they will be okay with the product failing. They 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 expect the product not to be perfect because they understand the product is new. So that's not the case with nothing after the early majority. So you have to be when you start a business, especially a product, you know, be sure you look for this type of people, the early majority type of people, because not everyone will be uh, an early adopter or it will be an innovator all the time. Now that being said, a person who is maybe uh, a laggard on TVs may be an early adopter in cars. You know, maybe they don't care about TVs. They just want to want to want to want. They just want to have one that works and and that's it. But maybe they want to buy the newest Ferrari out there because they want to try the new engine or you know, they want to go really fast or something like that. So we all have uh, a little bit of 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 each. Uh, set in our personalities so it's very hard to identify it's not like everybody's a laggard or everybody's an innovator it it's like a spectrum and we have to figure out what who is who when we start in a business now as I said before when you start something uh, meaning a product or a service and by that I mean a company a business you will start to the left in this graph with the innovators. So the innovators will give you some sales, will give you some momentum, and then you're going to start growing. But then you reach what's called the chasm. Some other people call it the valley of death. And that basically means that you're building a product, but your product is so specialized that it can only serve this small, tiny market that you have carved out for yourself. So in order for you to grow, our out of this market and become uh, from a special product to a general product you have to cross the chasm now in order for you to do that you have to become what's what's called a, new, a full product so basically you start with um, a product that's very specialized or a service that's very specialized so let's say we're talking about a service it could be a, a tree long, a tree long, uh, or a tree cutter, right? So you only cut trees. So it's very specialized. You only cut trees, but maybe people they they don't need trees cut all the time. Maybe they want something else. So then they start calling you to have other uh, services. So if you said no, you will not be able to get a, a, a huge percentage of the market. So maybe just by cutting trees, you'll be okay. But the moment that you want to grow, you're going to have to offer more services. So that will be the example of crossing the chasm and how to become from a, a special product to a full product when it comes to uh, a service. If it is a product, it's kind of the same thing. So let's say Google, they start just with search. And search is very complex and it's very hard. But now Google has Gmail, um, Drive, um, Chrome, the operating systems, I mean it's just it's so big what they have that it's even hard for me to remember all the things that they have but they started with one product and then they added some other services to service people online and why does Google add all these services? 
because then they get people people's data and they can use it on the algorithm to make them better so they are all connected at the end to search and search is still the core of Google's business but people use more products from Google and it's because they Google has developed these other products to kind of like cross the chasm right so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to think and this doesn't mean creating new products like Google did this more means like having a full spec of products that your customers uh, want or need more like the first example maybe that I was saying you still a loan uh, Corning Trees company and you kind of become a loan uh, maintenance company where you offer more services so that's the theory behind crossing the chasm so it all gets tied back to the uh, diffusion of innovation graph right so that's how you start thinking about the opportunity and how you start evaluating the opportunity you first go through all you know you, you look at the market you look at the customers you look at the context you look at the competition and then you see where are you on this technology curve so if we go back here sometimes people think of innovation as you know starting on the innovator level but there are many companies who actually they innovate when the when the when the technology is reach the late majority the reason why is because when you start something at the innovator level everything is very expensive whereas when you start something at the late majority level the technology is already proven it already has built its business cycle and everybody must produces the, the components so it's actually cheaper for you to do a great example of these things are the, those cell phones the track phone that all people use like to track themselves if something happens they're using cell phones and they started using these when they were very very cheap so people with low incomes could get them and that's how they innovated you know maybe they use one or two buttons and that's it they made they made it that simple and it's really an innovation they use old technology at that point to create a new to open up really a new market or, or product so don't be fooled by the fact that this says innovators and we're talking about innovation innovation doesn't start at the innovator level meaning that it doesn't start with new technology innovation could be new technology or old technology applied in novel way to create a new product okay so you have to break paradigms of thinking that innovation is new it, it's not always a new brand shiny thing it could be just a new use for something that's already old and proven